is modernbluesharmonica.com. Dot com, yeah. What for you makes a modern blues harmonica player? Um, well, I think that good blues, and let me take B.B. King as an example, uh, or, or Little Walter, good blues playing is, is often a tension between tradition and modernity, but the modern, whatever is the sort of cutting edge. And, and, and I think it's important to have both of those. If you, if you have only tradition, Mm-hmm. then to some extent you're locked in the past. You're, you're, you're in a retro mode. Some people are, want that or are comfortable. That's definitely not modern blues harmonica playing. But modern blues doesn't mean ungrounded. See, if you're sort of too far, leaning too far off the front of the boat, like in Titanic when he goes, I'm king of the world. <laughs> if you're too far off the front of the boat, right, you're, you're not rooted. You're not grounded. And for me, the interesting music comes when there's a tension between tradition and modernity, but that modernity's in there. So for me, modern blues harmonica... There is a range. A guy like Sugar Blue would be a good example, one example of a modern blues harmonica player. Um, Jason Ritchie is a good example. I once made a list of, of, of 10, Carlos Del Junco. Um, of course, two out of those three overblow, one of them doesn't. Two out of those three are really fast. One of them is, well, Carlos can be really fast, but he's, uh, he's more about the tasteful thing. The other two are really fast. But the idea of fast is that's always often an element of modernity things move faster and faster mm-hmm. and faster in that in the modern world we talk about that the digital age the um and i would say that i'm a a, a, a modern harmonica player i have a lot of that straight ahead kind of thing but i also have been overblowing since mm-hmm. the mid mid to late 80s so for me um it also means listening to doing what little walter did which is which is to say, listening to the R and B, the jazz, the pop of your time, mm-hmm. and trying to pull a little of that into your playing. Alex Paklin oh, yeah. strikes me as a, as a quintessential young, cutting edge modern blues harmonica player. He's got all of the tradition there, but he's also got a very distinctive style. And what I'm looking for always is what I call the three second test. If I hear you on the radio, do I know very quickly that it's you? It's very hard to get that. Sugar Blue meets that test. You know mm-hmm. right away. Now, you can say, well, sometimes what makes somebody uh, identifiable is a very narrowed kind of sound. Um, I think B.B. King, actually early B.B. King, without his voice, just the guitar, sounds a lot like his influences. He sounds a lot like T-Bone Walker. Um, by the end, we all can recognize, just mm-hmm. after a couple of notes, a guy like Albert Collins. I'm a guitar player, too. So Albert, uh, Albert Collins, incredibly uh, 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 identifiable. Um, and Albert King, right away, you kind of know that sound. Um, so I, so I, but I, so I think modern means being willing to use new techniques. Not don't have to. Um, Paul Delay was a modern. I was going to ask about Paul. Paul Delay is my favorite harmonic player of all time. I, I love Paul Delay's playing. He does a lot of blow arpeggios. Mm. You know that kind of mm. stuff. And there's a few players around who do that. Not a lot. So that was one of the things that I pick up on him. It's like wow, mm. he, that was an unexplored area. And Sugar Blue does some of that, too. The blow arpeggios. Mm. Um, in a cross harp style, yeah, yeah. So you're adding some notes that are. It's more like bebop. What bebop does, yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, I you know, and I had a list. There's a sp- Swedish player who doesn't gig out a lot around, but he but he has a lot of videos called named Hakan N. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah I've you've seen, seen Hakan. He's like he's. I call him Swedish modern. You know, it's it's like <laughs> industrial, straight ahead gothic kind of not gothic, but but um, it's like in, industrial kind of sound. Mm. You know. Yeah. Um, but interesting. I always he's always trying to do something a little bit yeah. different. I think that's what I like about Paul Delay is mm. when I listen to Paul Delay, I feel like it it almost doesn't work. It, it sometimes it's like he's almost falling off the edge, like you say, like bebop. It, it's yeah. like it's just yeah. keeping itself on the track, and that yeah. and it's thrilling and wonderful, and, and and it goes places that, that other people wouldn't. And a, a guy like Dennis Grunling is is also a, a quintessential modern player in in the respect that. He, he realized that nobody was really taking advantage of those low harps. Mm. And so even though in some ways he's, he, he plays in a traditional groove, um, and the songs he chooses, you know, are not, they're not kind of wild harmonies, they're not, um, and, he, and his approach, on the other hand, because he's using the low harps, it's different. It's like a baritone. He's, he's exploring something that hasn't been done, which means he's really instantly creating his own sound. There's only a couple of people that could be if they're playing those really low harps. 
and he plays some stuff in in twelfth position. Mm-hmm. I loved his first album, Jump Time. If people, if your if your students are not familiar with Jump Time, go and yeah. get that. That was yeah. a revolutionary album. <laughs>